Hello everybody, Interim Theory back again for the second time tonight. Uh, yeah guys, I have to keep this video rolling guys. Uh, yeah, this video will be about to predict, to preview the semi-final matches in Rome Masters 2020. Now that Rafael Nadal has been knocked out uh, where Diego Schwarzman stunned him with that out of this world performance, of course the bottom section of the draw will be wide open. Denis Shapovalov of course is, is happy about this, he of course more wanted to face Diego than Rafael Nadal, we all know this. Trust me guys, these guys when they are waiting for the opponent who they will face in quarter semis or finals, trust me they, they wish to, they prefer easier opponents than hard opponents. That is just common sense. I will be the same. So, Diego Schwartzman is, I mean, uh, Denis Shapovalov is feeling pretty good to face Diego Schwartzman instead of Rafael Nadal, the clay court terminator. So now, and the other match is between Novak Djokovic and Kasper Ruud. Yeah, Novak Djokovic he came through his quarterfinals match against uh, Dominic Koffer. I, I was not deadly impressed by Novak Djokovic's match, to be quite honest. He did a, he was, it was a roller coaster match for Novak Djokovic. He, he was doing a lot of errors. I believe he did 38 unforced errors or something like that. Uh, a lot of those unforced errors came with his forehand. So his, his forehand was not firing good, to, be, to say the least. Uh, he, had, he had a great start against Koffer was a 4-love up in the lead in the first set, then Koffer came back and leveled the match 4-4. But in the end, Djokovic won the first set, then, then Koffer came back, won the second. But in the third, Djokovic, of course, Djokovic always wins the, more or less, always wins the decider set. So if you want to beat Djokovic, do it in straight sets. Not, don't try to do it in the decider set because no, not many players who can do that. He's a monster in big points in in clutch moments, Novak Djokovic. It was not an impressive victory from Djokovic, but the most important thing, he went through. And he even said after the match, I have only myself to blame. I should never have been in that third set. I was up in the, up in the score, up, uh, one, one love up with a break in the second. Then I let him come back to, into the match and took and let him play that third set. So... Djokovic was never in trouble to lose the match because Koffer is, all respect to Koffer, he has done a tremendous good week, defeated some good guys like Monfils, Diminauer, he, on, he even saved one match point against Diminauer, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. But, and, he, and he gave Djokovic a, a pretty a good run for his money, but it was, it was mostly Djokovic's own fault, to be quite honest. It was. Djokovic was in pole position. Djokovic was on the lead, one love up in the lead with a break in the second, then he let Koffer into the match. But in the end Djokovic won, but Djokovic was way too up and down, his forehand, he needs to fix that forehand because his forehand was not good against Koffman. He was doing a lot of unforsteros, he was not, he dropped serve many times during the match. I believe Koffer break Djokovic serve four times all in all, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was Djokovic, that was Djokovic's worst performance I've seen in 2020. Yeah, guys, it was. I don't think Djokovic will do that kind of same match again. Uh, at least not in Rome. I don't think so. He cannot play worse than that. Uh, if Djokovic would have played that kind of match against Diego Schwarzman, he, he would have lost. I can guarantee you that, guys. Because I don't feel that, the, I don't feel that Rafa was worse than Djokovic. I don't feel that. Rafa was, did 30, and for Sarah, Djokovic did 38, so... And Djokovic was not doing a lot of winners. He was not doing a lot of winners. He did li very little winners. Uh, so, I, I, may, I believe, to be quite honest, Djokovic played even more, even worse than Rafa. But the, 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 what was lucky with Djokovic, he was facing a much, a much horrible opponent than Diego. Diego was in beast mode level. So if Djokovic would have, do, would, would have done the same match against Diego, he, was, he would have been packing his bags too. 
I swear to you guys, he would have been packing these bags with that level he played against Dominic Koffe. But nevertheless, he is through. He will now face Kasper Ruud. Kasper Ruud, who did a great match against Berrettini. Great. I don't know if it was great, but it was a good match. It was a very close battle. Could have gone either way. Casper uh, Ruud won, in, two, uh, won in, in three sets. The third set he won in tiebreak. Bretin was actually up in the lead in that in the third set tiebreak 5-3. Casper Ruud won five straight points. I'm sorry, four straight points. Casper Ruud and won that third set tiebreak 7-5. So uh, yeah, all credit to Casper Ruud. He's actually the first ever Norwegian player to play a thousand miles of uh, uh, semi-final ever. It has never happened in the Norwegian tennis history before. Uh, and now he gets even better than his father. I, uh, his father, he played as best in his, during his career a quarterfinals, uh, a quarterfinals in Masters. Now his son is taking, is taking a step uh, better and, and he's playing a semi-final. Kasper Ruud, like I said in my preview, he's a clay court. Uh, he likes, he's, uh, the, uh, uh, clay court is his best surface. So I, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I thought that they will defeat Berrettini, which he did, even though that he could, of course, have lost. The match could have gone either way. So now he'll face Novak Djokovic for the first ever time during his career, and he's doing that on his best surface clay. So will he have a chance against Djokovic? Yeah, he will have a chance, to be quite honest, guys. Especially if Djokovic plays like he did against Koffer. But I don't think Djokovic will do that. Djokovic will... Now that Djokovic knows that Rafa is out of the picture, not that Djokovic cannot defeat Rafa, of course he can. He, do, he has done it a bunch of many times. But he feels that he's the best player left in the draw. Of course, yeah, Shapovalov has never defeated Djokovic. Kasper Ruud is facing for the first ever time. So uh, he's the highest ranked player left in the draw. So... Uh, He's loving his chances to win his 36 Master 1000 title and take that lead because they are on 35 each with Rafa at the moment. So Djokovic is the favorite here. I will give 70% chances to Djokovic to win the match and 30% chances to Kasper Ruud. Kasper Ruud, I think he will give Djokovic a run for his money. I just think so. He's a good clay court player, Kasper Ruud. And you don't know how, will they, how they will match up. You never know when, the, when these players face each other for the first time, like Djokovic did with Koffer. Djokovic had never faced Koffer before. He didn't know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, we know. They watch videos and something like that. But it is one thing to watch videos and one thing is to feel... How, to know, how, how, to know how, how, how it is to play against the guy in a real tennis court. So Djokovic and Kasper Ruud will face each other for the first time and we don't know how, will, how they will match up but Djokovic is a better match, uh, much better tennis player Kasper Ruud he has a solid forehand, solid backhand he moves pretty good from the baseline he doesn't have a tremendous good serve in my opinion and he doesn't have that killer shot he doesn't have any killer forehand, any killer backhand he does everything, he, sim he reminds me of a worse version of David Goffin David Goffin, he does everything good on the court but he's not superior in anything and Kasper Ruud is a similar player like David Goffin, but worse. Uh, that's how I feel when I see Kasper Ruud play tennis. But he will have a chance. He will have a chance because Djokovic is not looking impossible to beat, to say the least. That's how, I, how we can say. But do I believe Kasper Ruud will do the upset? No. I don't believe so. Even though that upset happens, we saw what Schwarzman did to, against Rafa Nadal. It will not be a miracle if, if Kasper Ruud takes out Djokovic, but I will go with Djokovic. I will go with Djokovic here. I think Djokovic will win this match in straight sets. Stri uh, two close sets. Maybe 7-5, 7-6, something like that. So Djokovic comes through the first semifinal. Then we have the second semifinal. The night session se semifinal between Denis Shapovalov versus Diego Schwartzman. Diego Schwartzman, who did his match of his life against Rafa Nadal in the semifinals, in the quarterfinals, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, these two players are facing each other for the first time ever, I believe. I don't think that they have ever played against each other. Comment, comment below, comment down below if I'm wrong. 
uh, what I can recall, they have never faced each other. And guys, that is Shapovalov. I, I saw his match against uh, Dimitro. Like I said in my previous videos during the week, it is time we start having expectation on this guy. It is time we start to hype this guy. To be quite honest, I have not been totally sold on Denis Shapovalov before. I've been more sold on Tsitsipas. I've been more sold on Felix Aliasime. Not extremely sold on Denis Shapovalov. Because he used to have horrible returns. 12 months ago. He could barely return any serves. But he has improved those. He has improved those issues. He's still not a good returner. He couldn't return many of the Grigor Dimitrov's service, and Grigor Dimitrov doesn't have a superior serve, in my opinion. So, but he has improved the, uh, the returns. He's not horrible anymore on returning serves. He's still not good, but he is better than he was 12 months ago, to say the least. So, uh, but Denis Shapovalov, he has firepower, man. What I like with Denis Shapovalov is he doesn't slice any backhands because I have noticed one thing with these one-handed backhands players. Federer, Grigor, Team. They are really, really, they have bad confidence. They are not confident hitting their, their backhand. They are not. They slice so many times. We saw what Team did in the, that Yusupo final. He barely survived that one. He was, he was slicing eight, nine times out of ten times his backhand. Feder, we know, slices a lot of backhands. Grigor was slicing a lot of backhands against Shapo. Shapo, he hits his backhand. He almost never slices. I'm not saying that slices are not effective. They are sometimes, but not to slice every time. If you slice every time, that, do you know what that means? You are afraid of hitting flat backhands. And Chapel is not afraid of hitting flat backhands. Is he a superior of hitting his backhand? No. Is his, is his backhand solid? Yes. It, 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 it actually is. He doesn't do many unforced with his backhand. He does unforced Absolutely. But not many. Especially one year ago, he did a lot of unforced with his backhand. But since he was started to work with his coach, Mikhail Yuzhny, who had a really good one-handed backhand, Mikhail Yuzhny, uh, when he was playing tennis, he, he kind of, a, he has learned how to take down those unforced errors with his backhand, Mikhail Yuzhny. He, because I, I'm not seeing uh, Denis Shapovalov doing a lot of unforced errors with his backhand, like he used to do one year ago. Uh, he, and his, for, his forehand has been always good, Denis Shapovalov, since I first, uh, first time saw him playing tennis. He's, he really has a great forehand, Denis Shapovalov. Shapovalov. That is his big weapon, in my opinion, it is his forehand. Uh, and he, he has great, he has pow powerful strokes, both with his forehand and backhand. So he really can hit through you. Rafa Nadal couldn't hit through Dennis, uh, the Diego Schwarzman because Rafa Nadal has more spin in, in his ground strokes. Rafa Nadal's uh, ground stroke goes up like this and it is easier to defend that kind of shots because you, ha you have more time. It is Easier to defend a top spin than a flat shot. A flat shot takes more time away from you. A top spin gives more time to you to defend, like Diego could defend very successfully against Rafa Nadal in his quarterfinal match. So that kind of shots, uh, Diego Schwarzman will not get uh, versus Denis Shapovalov because Denis Shapovalov hits more flat shots. But Denis Shapovalov, he will do a lot. He will do unforced errors. Uh, he will give some free points to Diego Schwartzman. Not many, not many free points, but at least some free points. Uh, this is not an easy match to predict, guys, to be quite honest. After seeing Diego Schwartzman, that kind of performance he did against Rafa Nadal, can you go against him, really? Can you? Do I even dare to go against him? He was, a, he was in beast mode. But then again, I know that he will, he will probably not do that kind of similar great match back to back that is not high likely uh, 
it doesn't mean doesn't it doesn't mean just because Denis Shapovalov is a much worse tennis player than Rafa Nadal, especially on clay, that Diego Schwartzman will beat Denis Shapovalov easy. No, Denis Shapovalov at the current moment he's in the shape of his life. I have never seen Denis Shapovalov this this consistent week in and week out. He has had a tremendous good of three four weeks. Did a great run in Cincinnati. Did a great run in U.S. Open, and is now doing a great run here in Rome. So. It, is, it will not be easy time for Diego Schwarzman to take out Denis Shapovalov, to say the least. I, I, really, I really believe that. Uh, this match is really will be a close battle. It will be a close battle, I, I believe. But Diego Schwarzman, he must, he must really love his chances. He must be flying in confidence. He must, have, he ha, he must have had a boost when he defeated Rafa Nadal with that kind of great performance he delivered in the quarterfinals. So he will get into that court in that match, in that semifinal night session match versus Denis Shapovalov with high belief of defeating the uh, young, super talented Canadian. He, will, he, will, he really will love his chances. Uh, seeing Denis Shapovalov versus Hubert versus Grigor Dimitrov, Grigor Dimitrov, he's done, man. Even though he's not crazy old, man, he doesn't have any, any firepower in shots anymore. He doesn't have any backhand, Grigor Dimitrov. He used to have pretty good backhand three, four, five years ago, especially when he had this, that great year in 2017, when he played that semifinal epic one against Rafael Nadal and almost took him out, gave Rafael Nadal a, a hell of a run for his money and took Rafa to a fifth set battle there and won Cincinnati, won his first ever Most of Thousand title and then won the ATP Tour Finals in London in 2017. It is not the same Grigor Dimitrov three years later, guys. He's, his back is not good. He's, he's mostly times he's just slicing because he not, he's not feeling confident of hitting that that topspin backhand. He just, he just doesn't believe to hit that topspin backhand because he is afraid to do enough first arrows. He doesn't have any great serve anymore. I just, I, I'm not, he doesn't have any great serve. He used to have great serve, Grigor Dimitrov, but he doesn't have any great serve anymore. He really doesn't have. He, he's not super great in, in, in the defensive skills, Grigor Dimitrov. I just feel that Grigor Dimitrov is, is in downhill. He really he is in downhill, Grigor Dimitrov. And uh, it will be a bigger test for Schapo than Schwartzman. It will be a bigger test. Schwartzman is a clay court specialist. Schwartzman is a much better clay court player than what Grigor Dimitrov is. So I believe that considering all this, even though the Schwartzman is in his, in his shape of his life, at this, at, I mean, uh, Schapo is in his shape of his life. Schapo will give Schwartzman much more trouble with the serve. What Rafa did. Rafa served only 43% first serve sin. It was very easy for Diego Schwartzman to return Rafa's serve because Rafa didn't have any first serve. Basically, he didn't have any first serve against Schwartzman. Shapo has a, has a better serve than, than Rafa. So, in that, when the match starts from the first point, when Shapo will serve, Diego will have big troubles breaking Shapo's serve to begin with. But if Shapo misses a his first serve. If Shapo, say, for example, he, he doesn't land over 60% first serve sin, he's forced to use his second serve, even though the Shapo has a pretty good second serve. When the rally will be on, it will be advantage Diego, I believe. Because Diego just is he's not missing the ball at the moment. I'm sure, for one thing, I'm 100% confident. If Diego does a similar match like he did against Rafa Nadal, he will for sure defeat Chapel, but I'm not certain that Diego will do that kind of match back to back. It will be more, more or less impossible. And Chapel doesn't hit his shots like Rafa does. Chapel has more flat shots. So Diego will not have the time to prepare his ground strokes as he had against Rafa Dal because Chapel's ground strokes are flats. He, so Diego, uh, uh, so Chapo will take much more time away from Diego what Rafa did. But in the end of the day, I just believe that Diego will be the more consistent player. Even though the Chapo has a much better 
serve than Diego. In that department, Diego will not beat Shapovalov in the serving department or, or doing more aces because he will not do more aces than Shapo. Uh, but I feel that when the rally will be on from the baseline, I think that, I believe that Diego will wear Shapovalov down. That is my feeling. I just believe that at the current moment, Diego is so damn consistent, so damn solid from the baseline, he will just wear Shapovalov down from baseline. That is how I believe. That is how I feel the match will be decided from the baseline. And from the baseline, Diego Schwarzman will be better. Shapovalov will maybe break Diego's serve one or more, one or two, three times. Maybe. For sure he will, because Diego Schwarzman doesn't have the, any superior serve. But maybe Diego also will at least break Shapovalov's serve one or more, two or three times. Because we, we should not forget, it is still clay. Even though the Chapo has a much better serve than Diego, he will not be rewarded by his serve on clay like he would have been in a hard court. If this match would have been a hard court, I, will, I for sure would have picked Chapo. But this is clay and Shepard will not be rewarded on clay with his serve like he would have been in hard courts. So, consider all this, I will go with Diego Schwarzman defeating Shapovalov. Say in three sets. I will say Diego takes out Shapo in three sets. That is my prediction. So I believe we will get a, a Rome, Rome uh, Master 1000 final between Novak Djokovic versus Diego Schwarzman. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.